important topic, magnetism. We'll be looking at the definition of magnetism, we'll be looking at the calculations under magnetism, and we'll be looking at various formulas that we can use to solve questions in magnetism. But before we proceed, we need to know the definition of a magnet. Because the word magnetism was gotten from magnet. So what is a magnet? A magnet is any material. A magnet is any material that has the ability to attract or repel itself. A magnet is any material that has the ability to attract or repel itself. Under magnetism, we'll be looking at a very important law. We'll be looking at a very important law. That law is called the law of magnetism. The law of magnetism. The law of magnetism is a natural law. The law of magnetism is a natural law. And it states that like poles repel, unlike poles attract. Like poles repel, unlike poles attract. That is the first law of magnetism. It's a natural law. It is called a natural law because it happens in nature. So when we look at the law of magnetism, when we look at the law of magnetism, we are looking at the attraction of two unlike poles. We are looking at the, on, the attraction of two unlike poles and the repelling of like poles. Now, under laws of magnetism, when you look at magnets, if you place two magnets, if you place two magnets, let's call this a magnet. If you place two magnets side by side, if you place two magnets side by side, let's say this is the first magnet, let's say this is the north pole of this magnet, and this is the south pole of this magnet. And you have another magnet, you have another magnet. Remember I said, let's place two magnets side by side. If I have this magnet as the first magnet, and I have another magnet, let's say this is the south pole, this is the south pole, and this is the north pole. Since these magnets are placed, at different poles, they will attract. The law of magnetism says that unlike poles attract, but like poles repel. It means that the north pole will attract the south pole, while the south pole will attract the north pole. So since these two magnets, you can call them a bar magnet if you want, since these two magnets are placed side by side, it means they will attract. And that verifies the law of magnetism. The law of magnetism says that Unlike poles attract, but like poles repel. If, if two magnets are placed side by side, if two magnets are placed side by side, they generate what is called a magnetic force. When two magnets are placed side by side, they generate what is called a magnetic force. A magnetic force is generated from something called magnetic lines of forces. Magnetic lines of forces are seen to move from the north pole to the south pole. If you place these two magnets side by side, if you look at this north pole, it's going to attract the south pole. So it's going to generate and it's going to generate magnetic lines of forces. It's going to generate magnetic lines of forces. And these lines of forces they move from the north pole to the south pole. They move from the north to the south. They move from the north to the south. They move from the north to the south. The magnetic lines of forces, they are moving from the north. If you look at the direction of this arrow, they are moving from the north to the south. These lines of forces, called magnetic lines of forces, generate what is called a magnetic force. These forces, these lines of forces, generate what is called a magnetic force. N subscript N. Magnetic force is being produced when two magnets are placed side by side such that they attract themselves. When they attract themselves, they produce what is called magnetic lines of forces. These lines of forces that move from north to south are called magnetic lines of forces. And inside these magnetic lines of forces, a magnetic force is produced. The law that verifies the magnetic force, the current, the length, and the magnetic field intensity that is produced by the magnetic lines of forces is called the right hand rule. The right hand rule, the right hand rule is a law. The right hand rule, the right hand rule is a law that is used to show the relationship.
between the magnetic force, right hand rule is used to show the relationship between the magnetic force, magnetic field intensity, current I, and the length of a conductor. Right hand rule is used to show the relationship between the magnetic force, magnetic field intensity, current, and the length of a conductor. Now let's look at what this rule states. Right hand rule, it states that if a conductor is held at the right hand, if a conductor is held at the right hand this way, if a conductor is held at the right hand, it means the thumb is pointing towards the direction of the current. If you give, if you give someone thumbs up, this right hand screen says that if a conductor is held at the right hand, that the thumb is pointing towards the direction of the current, and the other fingers are pointing towards the direction of the magnetic field. That is right hand true. If you want to state right hand true, you can just give someone a thumbs up. It says that if a magnetic conductor or a conductor or a wire, if you want, is held at the right hand, the thumb is in the direction of the current and the other fingers are in the direction of the magnetic field. That is the right hand true. That's the statement of right hand true. Now, mathematically, 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 whenever you state a rule, you give the mathematical expression. Mathematically, right hand rule states that the force, the magnetic force in a conductor, F subscript M, is directly proportional to the magnetic field intensity or magnetic field. The magnetic force is directly proportional to the magnetic field, is also directly proportional to the current I, and is also directly proportional to the length of the conductor. Magnetic force is directly proportional to the magnetic field. Is directly proportional to the current and the length of the conductor. To change this proportionality sign, you introduce a constant. Now, if I introduce a constant into this equation, if I introduce a constant, if I introduce a constant into this equation, call that constant I introduce k. If I introduce a constant k into this equation, this proportionality sign will be changed to an equality sign such that this equation becomes F magnetic force is equal to K B I N. This constant is equal to 1. This constant is called K, but K is equal to 1. If K is equal to 1, it means that the magnetic force the magnetic force in a conductor. It means that the magnetic force F subscript F in a conductor is equal to the product of the magnetic field times the current times the length. This is the formula used to calculate the magnetic force in a conductor. Whenever you have a conductor or in any question that has to do with magnetic field, if you see a wall, wire or conductor, this is the formula you would use. Whenever you see the word wire or conductor in any question that has to do with magnetism, you use this formula. It means the magnetic field in a conductor is equal to the product of the magnetic field intensity times the current in ampere times the length of the conductor in meters. If this conductor is inclined to an angle, if this conductor is inclined to an angle, let's say this conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field. This formula becomes F is equal to magnetic field times current times L times sine theta. When you use sine theta, it's only when you have an angle. When the conductor is inclined to an angle, you use F is equal to BIL sine theta. But when it is not inclined to an angle or when it is perpendicular or at 90 degrees, you use F is equal to BIL.